The ancient Hebrew scriptures foretold of the Anointed One, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His Word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples. And after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Vayikra, Vayikra chapter 26. Baekra chapter 26, verse 3. We're going to take a look at it. Um, we're going to read that verse, and then I'll speak about it in a, a second. Baekra 26, verse 3. Baekra 26, verse 3. says, If you live by my regulations, observe my mitzvot, and obey them. Amen? We're going to pause there. A lot of times I've been giving you different types of messages as a, the Ruach would lead. But this week's Torah portion, Vayikra 26 and 27, is so timely. It is so amazing. Don't crank it down. It does not need to be cranked down. Okay? It is so timely, and all the events that are going on around the globe, it bears witness that we must read this because I believe that something is on the horizon. But I also believe in the promise, oh, I forgot to tell you the name of this message. It's PO 37, Blessings and Curses. Blessings and Curses. Our King, Yehovah, He is so loving and so kind that He gives us warning signs. He gives us this, this book that's a couple of thousand years old. At minimum, it's at least 1,500 years old because they found one in a bog in Ireland that was an exact match in Latin as it is today. We know that the Torah scrolls are thousands of years old. So the Lord is so wonderful and so giving and so forgiving that he says, if you read that verse again, verse 3, if you live by my regulations, observe my mitzvot and obey them. If. It's a very small word, but with incredible, incredible depth. If, if you take out the garbage, my father wouldn't yell at me, okay? That was my job as a kid. I had to take out the garbage. I don't know how many other sons had to do that, but I know my oldest son was going to be 19 uh, on Sunday. You know, if he takes out the garbage, I won't yell at him, okay? So our king, our father in heaven is saying the same thing to us. If you live by my regulations and observe them, so there's a whole thing about that. If, listening, not just listening, but hearing, obeying, Shema. Do you know the word Shema has 19 meanings? The word Shema doesn't just mean to hear, but it means listening intently, observing, so many different meanings. But the Lord is saying to us here, if, you live by these regulations, serve by mitzvot, and obey them, then I'm going to pour out a blessing that you can't even imagine. Look at verse 4 and 5 now. Then I will provide the rain you need in its season. The land will yield its produce, and the trees in the field will yield their fruit. Your threshing time will extend until grape harvest, and your grape harvest will extend until the time of sowing seed. You will eat as much food as you want and live securely in the land. Amen? The Lord is saying to us that if we love His commandments, if we follow them, these very simple things, that there'll be no time without something being produced. It says here, your grape harvest, your sowing, 
You'll eat as much food as you want. What he's saying is that he'll send the rain in its proper time, in its proper amount, so that everything will be producing so much, there'll be enough sun, enough uh, rain, and things like that, that you're going to have so much food that you're going to eat whatever you want, and you're going to throw away the rest, okay? Now, it's very interesting that this parasha is coming at this point, how it is the year cycle that we follow here at Beth Goyim. I, li I like the year cycle, and I think that's a cycle that we should follow, because many times you'll see things going on around the globe that line up directly with the parash reading for that week if you're running the year cycle. So last week we read a news report about the Pacific Ocean. Now I know you guys in the Philippines are much closer to this than we are, but off the coast of California they captured, you know, not captured, they were fishing and a bunch of tuna, all these tuna had major amounts of radiation in them. You can't even eat them. These, these hundred pound tuna are just the, are garbage because you can't eat them. Now, what the Lord is doing is he's taking away the food supply around the globe. Uh, yesterday in Washington State, a, a, um, a part of a, a, a barge came up on the shore from Japan. So from that tsunami. Last week, uh, a Harley Davidson motorcycle washed up on the shores of Washington State. So everything that's coming over, so all that radiation, all that stuff is coming this way. But the Lord is saying, if we follow his commandments, if we observe them, then you're going to get the rain in its proper season. So let's say we can't eat from the ocean. The Lord will give us enough rain to, to plant rice. But he's saying here about the trees. Now trees need more water than most plants because it's got to seep down to where the roots are so that the, the water can come up through the root system and then it can then produce a fruit. Like you get an apple. How many people want to bite an apple that is, uh, that is uh, not tasty and not juicy? Okay, so here it is the Lord was saying that if you follow his commandments, he's going to give the proper amount of rain. Now, in Africa right now, I just read a story from Kenya uh, this week. In Kenya, which is mostly Muslim, uh, they're, they're having a drought. And they're having their corn and their, their maize, uh, it's got a disease. So here these people don't have enough food as it is, and now the Lord is taking more away because they're killing the Christians in Kenya. Okay, so the Lord is saying to us a promise for those of us who follow, that if we, this small group of people, this remnant of people who wish to follow God's commandments, if you live by his regulations, he says he's going to pour out a blessing to you. That you're going to have so much food, all that you want. Okay, you're not going to want for food. So that means if you're not wanting for food, that means the price is going to drop down. Now we know in the book of Revelation, in chapter 6, verse 6, the Lord says, a day's wages for a loaf of bread. Well, why is that? Because at the end, that we're doing now, is that we are not following these very simple commandments. So many people wish to say that they're horrible. Why would God, our Father in heaven, and why would Yeshua and all the Talmudim, the disciples, why would they follow something that was terrible? But the promises of God are truly, truly amazing. The other part about this if you follow the regulations, that you will live securely in the land. Living securely. You won't need, uh, I think in America, some ridiculous number like $64 billion they, they had for um, national security. $64 billion because God said, if you follow my commandments, you'll live securely. You won't need all this because I'll put your enemies to shame. But when we don't want to follow God's ways, then he says you will not live securely. Okay? Look at verse 6, please. I will give shalom in the land. You will lie down to sleep unafraid of anyone. 
I will rid the land of wild animals. The sword will not go through your land. Amen? So if you're following these simple commandments, then the Lord says, I'm going to, you know, you imagine sleeping with peace, not having to worry about anything. Okay? This is what the Lord is saying to us today, is that if you follow these very simple commandments, He wants to pour a blessing out to us. He does not want to withhold anything from us. And He says to us that if we are His children, if we want to live in His house, He's saying to us that you will get a blessing if you follow these things. You're going to sleep unafraid. Now, just forget about that one, please. If you imagine living in Israel where constantly you have your neighbors in the north firing rockets into you and you have surrounding peoples at war with one another. But the Lord is saying to us, no matter where we live, that if you follow these simple commandments, He will allow you to sleep unafraid, unafraid of anything, unafraid of people coming in, of terror coming your way, if you follow these commandments. That's a blessing. Now, look at verse 7 and 8. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall before your sword. Five of you, five of you will chase a hundred. And a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. Your enemies will fall before your sword. So the Lord is promising us here that even though you're small, such as a country like the Philippines or Israel or any of the small countries that wish to side with Israel, that want to bless Israel, that want to follow God's commandments, he's saying that you'll be able to pursue your enemies, those who hate the light, hate the way we live, hate the way we do things, and only five of us will chase 100. That's pretty amazing odds. That the Lord is going to be the one that's actually fighting your battle, because how can five people fight 100? You know, 100 people surround five people, Game's pretty much us up unless you're Chuck Norris and uh, you know uh, Bruce Lee. You know together you got to be Chuck Norris. You know because Chuck Norris could take on a, a million people. But no. So here it is. The Lord is promising us that you're going to have power that's really not even yours. That if you follow these commandments, you'll be able to push people away. Those that don't want to. You'll be able to chase them away and you're not going to have to really worry about it. You're not going to have to build up the biggest army, have the most expensive warplanes and navy vessels and things like that. You'll be able to just chase them. Five of you will chase 100. You'll be able to push them away just because God is with you. If you're following these simple commandments. Now these to me are an incredible blessing. And why anybody would not want this in their life is just satanic. Okay? Anybody who says that you don't need these anymore, I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with sleeping securely. I don't see anything wrong with having as much food as you want. Okay? I don't see anything wrong with going lying down unafraid of anybody. I don't see anything wrong with not having people terrorize you. Okay? Now I know that you guys in the Philippines, you have experienced some of this. We've, I've read some news stories about how the, the Islam is coming into some of the islands there. And it's going all around the globe. But why? One must ask the question of why. When most of the world for the 19th century was God-fearing, preaching the gospel, at least living in a certain manner, some moniker of fearing of the Lord. But now today around the globe, in England last week, there were some Christians that couldn't have a conference because they were going to be talking about homosexuality, how it's not a you know God. Even though they had paid for the hall, the hall people said, you know, you're not inclusive to the homosexuals. So here we are. We're losing ground, but one must have to ask the question, 
why is this going on around the globe? And the Lord is saying here in Viacra 26 that if you follow my ways, then you'll be able to chase these satanic people away. Those who say that there is no God, those that say that, they're, um, that their way is better than our way, okay? So the Lord is saying five of you will be able to chase 100 away, and 100 will be able to chase 10,000. That's, that's tremendous odds. 100? Imagine being surrounded. There's 100 of you in a circle, and 10,000 people are surrounding you. You're not going to survive, but with the Lord, with Adonai, all things are possible. Now look at verse 9. I will turn towards you, make you productive, increase your numbers, and uphold my covenant with you. Amen? Sometime around, you know, about 20 years ago in America, we started to have a problem having children. Many people, even my wife's sister, was unable to have children. She paid 30 no, it was $45,000. They had to do it three times in vitro fertilization at $15,000 a try. It took them to the third try where they got their twin girls. Okay? But why? Why would this be happening? Well, the Lord says, if you follow my ways, you're not going to have problems reproducing. You know, I don't remember Avraham, you know, with Sarah having to take some of those, uh, those drugs that are out on the market today, like, you know, whatever those silly names, I'm not even going to mention the names, okay? But here, the Lord is saying, if you do these things, you're not going to have problems having 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12 children, okay? You're going to be able to have them, and we should all be doing that. If you're only having one child, you're going against God's will. If God doesn't, you know, if you can't get pregnant, that's another story. But if you're stopping the will of the Lord, See, if the Lord has given you a blessing to have children, then you should. Because he is stopping many people around the globe because they don't want to follow God's rules. But God is saying, I will turn towards you, make you productive. Now, making you productive is not just having babies. Productive in business. Productive in your, your town, your state, your government in all walks of life. So you're going to be productive because why? You're not going to be worrying about security. You're not going to be worrying about what to eat. You're not going to be worrying about money because why? You're following God and He is promising that if you follow these things, if you follow these simple rules, I will bless you. And He's promising this blessing of upholding my covenant. Now, it's a covenant he made unto himself. Remember when Abraham, he put Abraham to sleep, who walked the covenant? It was God himself. With the two pieces of, of the offering, and Abraham fell asleep, and the Lord, in the flaming torch, walked the covenant. So this covenant can't be broken by God himself because he made it unto himself. It can be broken by us. Okay? So what he's saying here to us, if you do this, you, if you, you follow my ways, if, that real small if, now it's a choice that each and every person has to make. Okay? A child growing up needs to be shown the way so they can make a very informed decision because nobody knows what's in any of our hearts and let, only God does. Okay? So God is saying, if you want to follow my ways, not just, oh, I'm going to do it because, but no, if, choice, loving, Okay, then you won't have enemies or you pursue your enemies and they're going to disappear on you. Okay, a hundred of you are going to chase 10,000. So imagine the Philippines going to war with China. Okay, David versus Goliath. Okay, but if you were following God, that if they were attacking you, 100 messianic Torah observant Jew and Gentile will be able to chase away 10,000 Chinese. 200, 100,000. Now there's a lot of Chinese. But imagine that if you just wanted to have your own, your own island there and you, you wanted to serve the Lord and make it a fully Torah observant island, then you would live securely. You wouldn't be worrying about that fishing stuff that's going off on your, your western coast there. Okay? 
So here it is, is that if you follow these things, God is promising. He says, I will uphold my covenant. Now that's a promise that I want. I don't know about you, but I, I want that, that promise. In the world we're living in right now, when we get into the curses, when, once we get to verse 14, we're going to get into the curses. But the, the stuff that's going on around the globe right now is just amazing. Just truly amazing. All these curses that we're going to get to, I'm going to show you that in the news, they're happening. Okay? Verse 10, you will eat all you want from last year's harvest and throw out what remains of the old to make room for the new. You're going to have so much, God is saying, if you follow my commandments. That you're going to have to throw this stuff away. Or give it away. But you're going to have enough. You're going to have enough. Now there are many people around the globe right now. I think the number was somewhere in a quarter of a million people in Kenya. That are going to starve to death this year. A quarter of a million people. But God is giving us so much food. And he's promising so much food. America, as you can see, most of us are not thin, okay? Through the 1900s, when we became a superpower, when God poured out his blessing, when the main export going out of this country was the gospel, we began to get heavier. But the heaviness is also a, a, a thing of prosperity because God is saying, you're going to have as much as you want. Because he's going to be pouring out the rains, okay? Then we had that one bump in the road with, uh, with the, uh, in the 30s when we had the Dust Bowl and stuff like that. And we've had the two world wars. But we went to get Hitler in World War II because he was evil and what he was doing. And we, and we had to go do it because it was a righteous thing to do. We stood with those who stood with the gospel, okay? It wasn't totally a crusade, but it was Hitler wanted to wipe out everybody who was not following the Nazi way. So the Lord is saying, here, you're going to throw out all that remains. But now, in the world, we have vast parts of Africa not having enough food. Parts of France not having enough food. Parts of Europe not having enough food. Why? Because they're kicking out the gospel. Okay, but the Lord is promising that if we follow His commandments, these simple 613 rules, if we follow these simple, simple, simple rules, He is promising a blessing around the globe. Not just us. See, the blessing will also spill over because you don't have to throw out that food. You can just give it to somebody. Here, take, take what's, you know, you know, it's no good for us, you know, here. But you can have it. Because that's what Torah says, like with the book of Ruth, how Ruth came and she said, you know, can I glean in the field? Yes, the poor people can glean in the field. Now here is one of the most special lines. Look at verse 11, please. Verse 11. I will put my tabernacle among you, and I will not reject you. Amen? The Lord is saying... And this is what we need to understand for the days that we're living in. Because the time could change like this. Okay? If you tune in tomorrow, what tomorrow's message is about. How the Lord gives us signs and wonders. And then boom! It changes in a heartbeat. But it isn't because we don't know. It's because we don't want to look at it. But the Lord is saying here in verse 11. That if you follow my, my commandments. I'll... I'm going to live with you. I'm going to live with you. I'm going to tabernacle with you. Who would not want the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, living in your house, being a part of your town? Do you think you're going to worry about anything if God is with you? But why would we not want Him to live with us? Why is it better to live in the world's ways? Why is it better to fornicate? Why is it better to, to curse? Why is it better to drink? Why is it better to do everything else except for this? The Lord is promising, 
a covenant with us. He's promising not to reject you. He's promising not to leave you alone. He's promising to stay with us. He's promising to tabernacle with us. This is to me, I'd do anything for the Lord to be living with us. I'd do anything to want this, and I don't know, understand why people don't desire this to be. I don't understand it. But look at verse 12 now. But I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. He will walk in our midst. If God is walking in our midst, in verse 12, if God is walking in our midst, we will not have any enemies because the Lord's hand will be protecting us. We will be able to sleep like a newborn baby without a care in the world. We will have as much food as we want because the sun will be providing for us. We will have enough to throw away or give to whomever to show the light. And it all comes down to what we read in verse 3. That if if you do these things, if you do these simple 12 verses, if you follow them. But let's look at verse 14 and 15 now, the curses. But if you will not listen to me and obey all these mitzvot, if you loathe my regulations and reject my rulings in order not to obey all my mitzvot, but cancel my covenant. Amen? So here... If you not listen, if you're a child that likes to put your fingers in, your, in their ears and doesn't want to listen to their parent because a child knows better than anybody else. If you loathe my regulations. Loathing means to hate. Makes you sick. Makes you, dis you, you think they're disgusting. Now this is what the body is doing today. They loathe God's regulations. They, they fornicate and they call it grace. They do whatever they want. They make up their own holy days and they call that, that's God. Well, we can do what we want. We're under grace. But the Lord is saying here, if you loathe my regulations, if you loathe my regulations, if you will not listen, if you hate what I'm doing, then you might not want to listen to the rest of this message. Because I'm going to read what it says in this chapter. We're just going to look at this chapter tonight because it's so important because there, all these things are going on in the world this week. This week. The Lord is screaming from heaven, please listen to me. And it says here, look at verse 15 again. If you loathe my regulations and reject my rulings in order not to obey all my mitzvot, but cancel my covenant. It isn't the Lord who's canceling it. It is we, the people. Each person has the objective to either keep the covenant or throw it away. You can't have both. You can't be a little pregnant. You're either pregnant or not pregnant, okay? You can't be a little married. If, if you're a little married, that means you're not married at all, okay? So what the Lord is saying is that you will cancel the covenant. Now, if you cancel the covenant, you can't want the blessings. You can't want the first 12 verses. If you cancel the covenant, that means you are throwing away God walking with you, tabernacling with you, having enough food, being worried about you know Al-Qaeda and Hamas coming in and doing things to you. You're going to you know, have alarm systems on your house because... You know, if people come in, you have alarm systems on your car. When I was growing up in the 60s and the 70s, we didn't have alarm systems on our cars. We didn't lock our doors. We slept with the windows open at night. But nowadays, lock the windows, lock the doors, double lock the door, put a chain on the door, put, put your alarm system on. Why are we doing that? When I went to Peru, everybody had bars on their windows. You were locked in your own prison in your home. When I went to Guatemala, it was the same thing. When I went to India, it was the same thing. Why? Because we don't want the covenant of God. Even in some parts of the Philippines there, 
It was very interesting. Look at verse 16. Then for my part, will do this to you. I will bring terror, Hamas, upon you, wasting disease and chronic fever, to dim your sight and sap your strength. You will sow your seed for nothing because your enemies will eat your crops. Bringing terror. What is the biggest thing in the world right now? Terror. Oh, the loving Muslims. The loving, mu <laughs> loving Muslims? They're beheading Christians all around the globe. In Mexico, the drug lords, 49 people last week were beheaded. 49! In Canada, here's a guy on top of a roof with his wife's head in his, in his hands, yelling, Allah Akbar. You know, so you had to kill the person because you're a coward? But this isn't just going on in those two countries, it's going on around the globe. Wasting disease. What is cancer? What is AIDS? What is hepatitis? Wasting diseases. Hepatitis now is more so than it was before. Uh, gonorrhea is up and coming again. All the sexually transmitted diseases. In 1995, there were 100,000, uh, there were something like 100,000 cases of AIDS in America. By 2005, the number had gone up 100%. Okay? It was well over a million. A million in 10 years. From 100,000 to a million. Way over that. Wasting, that's what a wasting disease is. But in those 10 years, in those 10 years, in the 8 years that we've had this ministry, I've seen things go insane. You know, wasting diseases. AIDS is on the rampage. Two things today in today's news. A 6% rise in uh, suicide in teenagers. 6%. Another news article today. In the military, there's at least one suicide a day. One suicide, at least one suicide a day. Wasting, the, your mind is wasting away, your bodies are wasting away. Chronic fever. Dengue fever is around on the islands again and in Africa again, up and coming. But the Lord says, if you loathe my regulations. And homosexuality is just the tip of the iceberg. It's the last thing, actually. Okay? The rest of the stuff leading up to it. But here, the Lord is saying, if you loathe my regulations, I'm going to send this. He promises. And this is what's going on in our world this week. Verse 17. I will set my face against you. Your enemies will defeat you. Those who hate you will hound you. And you will flee when no one is pursuing you. Your enemies will defeat you. When America signed the Roe versus Wade thing, and when we took prayer out of school in the 60s and 70s, America had never lost a war. As soon as she did, she lost the Vietnam War. That was the very first war we lost. And now, your enemies are defeating us. You know, there's no clear-cut winner in Afghanistan. There's no clear-cut winner in Iran. Okay? So here, the Lord's promises is coming before it. If you loathe His regulations and break your covenant, then you know what? You're going to lose. And you're going to worry about people. They're gonna, you're going to flee. Now look at this in verse 18. If these things don't make you listen to me, then I will discipline you seven times over for your sins. Amen? Seven times over for your sins. We're seeing an exponential rise in every one of these categories around the globe. Over 11 different places around the globe have had beheadings this week from the Muslims. You're having the crops disintegrate. You're having... Fires in America, over 350 acres. No, 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 it's more than that. 350 miles in New Mexico on fire. You're having drug lords taking over Mexico. Okay? So the Lord is allowing this seven times over. But if we love His commandments, if you wouldn't have to worry about being chastised seven times over for this. Look at verse 19 and 20. 
I will break the pride of pride you have in your own power. I will make your sky like iron, your soil like bronze. You will spend your strength in vain because the land will not yield its produce or the trees in the field their fruits. Amen? You're seeing this happen in America. I use America because there's only two countries in the world ever dedicated to God. Israel and America. Don't let people lie to you. America was dedicated to God before they got off the boat on the Mayflower. Okay, the Mayflower Compact. Read it. They dedicated this country to God before they got off the boat. And once again, in the Virginia Charter in 1607, they dedicated the country to God before they got off the boat. So here it is. America has been very prideful, pushing their weight around with money and stuff and power. But now the Lord is breaking us down. Nobody respects this country anymore around the globe because the Lord said, if you loathe my regulations, we have a president who is absolutely abhorrent to God. Okay? If you loathe, his, you know, he's a consummate liar, this man. If you loathe my regulations, the Lord says, then I'm going to break you. I'm going to break your pride. Our crops are going down and down and down. Now, when that happens to us, that also affects the world because us and Russia are the two that provide wheat to the world. Okay? But Russia is also having a tremendous drought. Okay? And then last year, they had that gigantic fire that ate up most of their crops. Okay? So the Lord is saying, I will make your soil like bronze. Like bronze. Look at verse 21. Yes, if you go against me and don't listen to me, I will increase your calamities sevenfold according to your sins. Sevenfold according to your sins. Okay? So the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying that I am going to increase your calamities sevenfold. When you look at the news that is going on around the globe, you will see that these calamities are going on worldwide but more so than ever before. We're having more earthquakes than ever before. I mean, look at what happened to Japan, the tsunami. The Lord says that he'll have these sevenfold things happening. Now, these are happening around the globe. We're having tornadoes. We're having... We had more tornadoes in America than ever before. We had in one weekend over s almost 800 tornadoes 800 tornadoes okay the calamities around the globe are going more so i don't remember growing up and i'm almost 50 you know hearing about tsunamis i mean maybe if you lived in hawaii you, you had to hear about it but i never saw one and then we had the one a few years ago and then this japan one and then they're having all these earthquakes going on in South America, volcanoes erupting all over the globe. God says, if you loathe my regulations, I'm going to start saying, and he's yelling from heaven. He's like saying, please turn back so I don't have to keep doing this. Verse 22, I will send wild animals among you. They will rob you of your children, destroy your livestock, and reduce the numbers until your roads are des deserted. My son was, for the last two days, has been walking our dog in the morning, and he's being attacked by a bird. This bird is like attacking, okay, he's not picking up, but it's, a, you know, the birds are attacked, wild animals. But we're having a lot of this around the globe, it, that animals are attacking more. There was a, a show on about this uh, fish that, um, where was that place that it was happening, just that fish? Yeah, the fish. Okay, there's a fish that, that is a vegetable eater. It eats usually plants. And the people would be able to go into the river and, you know, get the other fish out. But this fish is now changing. The fish is actually attacking the people and taking chunks like piranha. But it's not a piranha. It's a, a vegetarian fish. But the Lord is saying, now this is happening in one place. There was a, a video I saw the other day in the news 
This man was fishing, and an alligator just came up and tried to eat him. Okay? Then there's this another one with a shark that people were just fishing, and this shark came up and tried to jump in their boat to eat the people. So the Lord is saying, if you loathe my regulations. All this in the last two weeks. Look at verse 23 and 24, please. If in spite of all this, you refuse my correction and still go against me, then I too will go against you. And I, yes, I will strike you seven times over for your sins. Amen? So you see the Lord is saying, that I don't want to do this. Please don't make me do this. But imagine the, all these calamities just keep coming and coming and coming. But also, understand this. You need to understand this chapter because in Revelation, you have what? Seven bowls, seven seals, seven trumpets. Why? Right here. Right here. But if you had not known that, because you don't wish to study the Old Testament, then you don't understand why there's seven bowls, seven trumpets, and seven seals. Okay? Look at verse 25 now. I will bring a sword against you, which will execute the vengeance of the covenant. You will be huddled inside your cities. I will send sickness among you, and you will be handed over to the power of the enemy. Now, we need to look at this. People around the globe. Those who follow, say they're, that they're Messianic believers, Christians. You're not being raptured out of here. It's ridiculous, that thought. The Lord is saying here, I'm not rapturing you out of here. Because you break my commandment. You can't follow my son Yeshua, who gave you his own example. I'm going to send you and you're going to have this calamity. And you understand that you're going to have this happen to you. Because Yeshua says, remember what's underneath his throne? The souls of those who had been beheaded for the gospel. I guess they weren't raptured. Okay? So the Lord is saying, please don't make me do this. Please don't make me do this. Now look at verse 26. I will cut off your supply of bread so that ten women will bake your bread in one oven and dole out bread by weight and you will eat but not be satisfied. So before the Lord said, you know, you'll eat as much as you want, you'll throw away things. But if you loathe my commandments, if you dislike my covenant, then what it says in Revelation 6 is going to happen. A day's wages for a loaf of bread. You're going to all huddle around one stove to make that one loaf of bread. Why? I'm echoing. Why are you going to do that? Because you loathe the regulation. But if you had not read Leviticus 26, then you don't understand what Yeshua is saying in Revelation 6. That's why we need to study the beginning so that we don't have to get to Revelation. Verse 27 and 28 says... And if for all this you still will not listen to me, but go against me, then I will go against you furiously, and I will also chastise you yet seven times more for your sins. Fourteen times over. When all we had to do was say yes to God's Torah, yes to Yeshua's example. And he's getting ready to do this. And he's giving us signs and wonders because you know what? Noah was, Noah was building the ark for how long? 100 years, right? And then all of a sudden, what? Like that, it just changed. Everything was going along fine in Sodom and Gomorrah. Bunch of homosexuals. And then one night, boom. Everything was going along fine. The Talmudim were living a, you know, a decent life. And Yeshua tells them, I'm going to be handed up. And all of a sudden, boom. Changed. But Yeshua told them. So here it is. The Lord is saying to us. If you load my regulations. This is what's going to happen. Here is one of the biggest ones. And this is what's been happening. Around the globe. This week. 
You will eat the flesh of your own sons. You will eat the flesh of your own daughters. This past week, yeah, past week, there was a man that was high on some sort of designer new drug. And he started, this man killed another man and he started to eat his face. Eat his face. There was another man in Canada did the same thing. Now there's also a disease that's eating our flesh, but it isn't just in America. I saw another story in India that this is eating away the flesh. The spider bites you and then all of a sudden it starts to eat away all your flesh. Not the spider, the disease. Did they go offline? No. Oh, Camille did. So here it is. Verse 30. I will destroy your high places, cut down your pillars for sun worship, and throw your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols. And I will detest you. This is also what happened in World War II. There are many, the soldiers, the American soldiers that went into Nazi Germany, found a whole bunch of people in the churches clinging to the idols. The Christians clinging to the idols. Just like it says here. God says, I will chastise you. Verse 31, I will lay waste to your cities and make your sanctuaries desolate so as not to smell your fragrant aromas. This is what's happening around the globe. In Africa, in, Eng in England, there's many churches now that have become homosexual bars, nightclubs, shopping centers, churches that once were filled with people seeking the Lord are now nightclubs. We even have that happening in America. The Lord will say, I'll lay waste to your cities. If you take a picture of what Detroit, Michigan looked like before World War II, and you look at it today, it's a city that's laid to waste. But Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Nagasaki, where the bombs were dropped, you take a look at those today, they're thriving communities. But we, because the Lord has taken us down. Verse 30. Three, you will, I will, you I will disperse among the nations, and I will draw out the sword and pursue after you. Your land will be des a desolation, and your cities a wasteland. All we need to do is look at what happened to Israel for two thousand years, when she did not want to follow God's ways. Yeshua came to bring us back to Torah, but they didn't want to go that way. They wanted to follow the rabbis instead of. The Torah of God. Look at verse 36 through 38. As for those who are left, I will fill their hearts with anxiety in the lands of their enemies. A sound of a driven leaf will frighten them so they will flee as one flees from the sword and fall when no one is pursuing. Yes, when no one pursuing, they will stumble over each other as if fleeing a sword. You will have no power to stand before your enemies. And among the nations, you will perish. The land of your enemies will devour you. I know a woman that was a Holocaust survivor. Her name is Helis Selman. When she became a believer back in, I think, 2000, she was a Holocaust survivor of that night. It's called Kristallnacht. It's a night where they broke all the glass of all the Jews, homes, businesses. She said they just picked up whatever they had in suitcases and ran as fast as they could. And ever, ever since then, to the time she was, I guess, in her 70s when I met her, she would hear a leaf outside in the middle of the night. She would wake up in a cold sweat. What the Lord said here would ha has happened. It's because we loathed His regulations. So all these Holocaust people, they would hear something outside and get very nervous because they were in the land of their enemies instead of the land of the God, where God gave us to us. Verse 40, Then you will confess, they will confess their misdeeds and those of their ancestors which they committed against me in the rebellion. They will admit that they went against me. What the Lord is looking for us today so he doesn't have to do these things more. Is what we call in Hebrew, teshuva. Repent 
and return. That's what the, Lord, what the word teshuva means. Now, I know that's time for Yom Kippur, but we need to do that right now. Because all these things that the Lord just laid out for us in this chapter are happening in our world today. It's not just America. It's all around the globe. If the European Union fails, everything will collapse because it's greed, okay? Everybody that needs to pull back, if we were all God-fearing, we'd all just pull back, okay? But if that big puzzle piece collapses, China's put a lot of money in, they collapse, America's put a lot of money into China, and all everything goes boom, just like it says in Revelation, with the seven heads and the ten horns. But the Lord says here, if you teshuva, I'll hear from heaven. And in verse 41 and 42, at that time I will be going against them, bringing them into the land of their enemies. But if their uncircumcised hearts will grow humble, and they are paid the punishment for their misdeeds, then I will remember my covenant with Yaakov, also my covenant with Yitzhak, and my covenant with Abraham. I will remember the land. Amen? There you see circumcision of hearts in the Torah. God is looking for a circumcised heart. He also wants you to be circumcised in the flesh because that's part of the regulation. But he's also looking for a circumcised heart. Well, what is a circumcised heart? getting rid of all the things of the world and coming into God's ways. He's looking for us to teshuva. Look at verse 44, please. Yet in spite of all that, I will not reject them when they are in the lands of their enemies, nor will I load them to the point of utterly destroying them and thus break my covenant with them because I am on an either God. Amen? This is also for the replacement theology people who don't read the Bible. Okay, God says, I will not utterly destroy them, and I will not forget my covenant. So that means that the church has not replaced Israel as God's covenant people. So here, God is saying, I will remember. If he breaks us down, and you have a remnant, and that's what the Lord is looking for us today, from here in New York to all the way in the Philippines and anybody else listening online, the Lord is looking for hearts that want to teshuva, that will say, I will do anything to come back to your graces. I want you to tabernacle in my life. I want the blessings that you talked about. I want to live securely. I want to eat what I, I want to be able to eat. I want to have the rain. I want to have my farm going. I want to live securely. I want to be with you. I want to do your things. And then the Lord will say, yes, I remember you. And I will heal your land. This is what the Lord is looking for us right now. Before he has to go to the next stage of the sevenfold chastisement. Study this, understand it, then you can understand what the book of Revelation says. Amen. Amen. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Yisabunai, 
Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. The Remnants Call is a part of Beth Goim Messianic Congregation in Fairview, New Jersey, USA. Beth Goim is located right outside of New York City. Beth Goim is a congregation where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua the Messiah as one people. Following the Route 66 King's Highway, Genesis to Revelation, the only perfect word of Adonai. For more information on this end time ministry and how you can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God, call 973-338-7800. That's 973-338-7800. Or check out our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y. I am dot org or house of the nations dot org. Be with us live on the Lord's Day Shabbat, Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the sounding of the shofar and the word of God in English and Spanish. You can also be with us live Tuesday evening at 7:15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Messianic Torah Time Bible Study. It's all free. Just click the on air button. It is that simple. Remember bethgoim.org or house of the nations dot org. 973-338-7800 973-338-7800 Petcoim also has a congregation in Costa Rica.